The PGA Tour is in deep legal battle with Live Golf. Who is involved? What's the latest action? And will they be forced to show up in US court? There are Live rumors and changes ahead too, so watch the video to know the whole story of the PGA Tour on Live Golf's legal battle. Let's get into it. First up, what are the PGA Tour and Live Golf? The Professional Golfers Association is the premier professional golfing organization of the United States, and some would even say the world. Live, however, is actually a reference to the Roman numerals that read identically, meaning 54. The score if every hole on a par 72 course were birdie. It's the same number as the holes played at Live events, so they keep it pretty centered. The PGA was founded back in 1929, whereas the first Live Gold Invitational Series started in June of 2022. There have been some very serious actions taken by PGA against Live, and serious threats have been rumored that going from PGA to Live is a one-way street, with players barred from returning to PGA play after participating in any Live event. They have a strategic alliance with the MENA Tour, and that's where a lot of current troubles begin. Now, what's the PGA Tour alleging about Live Golf? Per filed documents in the ongoing legal conundrum, Live Golf is faced with PGA Tour alleges that Saudi Arabian bankrollers of the Live Tour have refused to respond to court summons in the United States, claiming they lack jurisdiction over them. PGA Tour alleges the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia and its lead exec Yassi al yuraman have refused to produce documents or give a deposition after accepting court subpoenas. This risks putting them in a contempt of court, a very serious offense. PGA is alleging that Live and their backers are claiming to be above legal authority of the United States and their judicial system. Live is notable for a series of high-profile wealthy backers, including strong support from former U.S. President Donald Trump. The lawsuit was filed in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. It's really going after the Public Investment Fund directly while bypassing the Live Gold organization itself directly. The governor of the fund, Yasir Athan Ali Rahman, is reported to be worth more than $500 billion. So what did Trump have to say? Trump hosted the last big event of Liv's kickoff season at the Trump National Doral Golf Club down in Florida. Complaints about the Saudi connection fell on deaf ears and issues about Saudi Arabia's human rights history easily deflected. We have human rights issues in this country too, Trump was quoted as saying. He's heavily criticized the PGA Tour and said his venerable, powerful organization has more or less made its own problems. He spoke to the amount of money and resolve the Live Golf organization has at their disposal as well. That being said, what is Liv's future? The PGA Tour legal proceedings are a big blow against Liv Golf. Atop that though, they're unable to obtain a TV rights deal. That leaves them a golf enthusiast's narrow interest and in pro event where you can, as a winner, pick up some of their planned over $400 million in prize money in 2023. They're hoping the unique team format catches on and brings its revenue a bit closer to what the PGA Tour achieves. It may makes $75 million in its first year of revenue, whereas the last tour season for PGA brought in $1.5 billion. Given the vast financial resources of Live, so long as they maintain their funding from the public coffers of the unofficial OPEC leader of Saudi Arabia, they'll remain a staying force in the golf world as oil money continues to bribe players over to their side to enjoy a new set of dynamics surrounding team play events. So now, what are the Live rumors swirling around. Over the past six months, serious journalistic scrutiny has increased on Live Golf. The New Yorker ran a big overview piece of Live late in October, and golf bloggers like Handicap54 report on news daily, like the PGA Tour host of Maricoba looking to become a Live host next year. Players and locales are moving to Live for a simple reason. Big, fat stacks of money offered up front. There's a nearly endless well of cash behind the Live Golf operation, pouring straight from Saudi Arabia and other well-heeled backers into the coffers that let them offer more in prize money than they make in a year. Live Golf is bringing team formats and free agency as concepts, both of which are shaking up the golf news world, and people are pretty tight-lipped about their roles in the affair. Consider Brooks Kopka, who denied moving over to Live at the US Open literally days before he did, in fact, move over to them. Lots of players are keeping silent, but even when they don't, they'll 
they'll sometimes just lie. Fact checking is split between bloggers and the odd specialty sports piece. This gets spotty. John Rom had rumors swirling he'd already signed on with Liv, and a Twitter account called Live Golf Insider confirmed this. Then John Rom himself responded saying it was fake. But do we have any juicy rumors about who's going over to Live? The fourth in the world, Patrick Cantlay, has been linked with Liv since his inaugural event, as he admitted he'd been very tempted by their lucrative offers. He walked it back at the Rocket Mortgage Classic, but he's clearly oscillating. The Guardian reports he and Xander Schaffel are the biggest on the wish list for Liv. Xander Schaffel, speaking of, is hunting for a major win. He received what he described as an obnoxious offer from Liv back in June, so he went all in on PGA Tour. But Liv has seen his value and are likely to be pumping up the offers soon. After all, we've heard that they have unlimited money. Adam Scott, a Masters champion, has been linked to his old friend Greg. He's rumored to be soon for the Saudi payroll through a series of backroom deals and allegiances. Scott says he was in an emergency meeting of 22 players called by Tiger Woods to strategize against Liv. So what's the truth? Will he be staying with PGA or selling out for Liv? Their Aussie starts have attempted to win him over, so it's clear there's a serious pursuit. Cameron Young is a PGA Tour player and one of several Camerons. Will he hop to live and be the only Cameron over there? Well, he was a runner-up in the open and had been linked to live after the Times dropped a source-free expose suggesting he was on his way to live. At a big FedEx Cups playoff presser, he says he's decided to stay on the PGA Tour, but since other players have said the same and then gone over days later, what this really tells us is there's been an offer and he's considered it. Hideki Matsuyama has also had a big rumors across 2020 saying he's likely to join with Liv. People said he was offered a $400 million sign-on fee. He pulled out of the FedEx St. Judge Championship due to a neck injury, but there were suggestions of overstated injury ahead of a defection. He came out and insisted he's fully committed to the PGA Tour. But is our Japanese player really committed to the PGA or buying time to make his choice? Ricky Fowler maintains the PGA Tour being the best way to play, but thinks the situation needs to evolve. We've seen him do some team-up events, and he's probably interested in the format change-ups. He's broadcasting Allegiance, but probably considering jumping sides if PGA doesn't evolve the way he says they need to. Jordan Spieth was rumored to join Liv ahead of the Open before shutting down the rumors. We think these ones are probably unsubstantiated, and people are just making wild guesses at this point. After that, what's up with coaching? Lydia Ko and Sean Foley have split over logistical reasons. As Lydia moved out of Orlando and was no longer easily available to coach Sean, Colin Marikawa is looking to short game master Stephen Sweeney. Hailing from the Emerald Island of Ireland, Stephen Sweeney has an impressive list of player clients across both PGA Tour and Live Golf. Shane Lowry, Sebastian Munoz, Joaquin Neiman, Carlos Ortiz, Mito Pereira, and Aaron Weiss. Lastly, the Tiger and Rory team up. The latest match series is giving a high-powered two versus two with four of the greatest. The Big T will pop off in Pelican Country Club outside Tampa. Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy will bring the full strength of their combined forces against Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth. It all goes down at 6 p.m. on December 10th. PGA Tour players are clearly open to doing some non-PGA Tour events. That's great for us fans, but how will the Tour feel about this with foes like Live Golf? What do you think? Comment who you expect to see go over to Live next. Drop a like and grand slam the subscribe button hard down range to keep up with our content.